Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this video, I am going to show you how to diagnose papilledema using your ultrasound. Your probe of choice here is going to be the linear transducer. Just like anything superficial, you want to use the highest frequency transducer to get that best image. Now, one thing that I will mention is that it's a good idea to use the ophthalmology setting on your linear probe, and this is a decrease the thermal and mechanical index to the retina. All that to say that it just decreases the amount of energy that goes into that retina so that you decrease the likelihood of any harm from that ultrasound to the retina, but there's never been any documented harm because most of us aren't scanning for four hours at a time. So if you have the opto setting, great, use that. If not, just lower the mechanical index, lower the thermal index, to be the safest you can with this examination. Now, this is pretty easy actually to diagnose this with ultrasound. What we're looking at is we're looking to see is, is the optic nerve, is it elevated off of what you imagine the retina should be at? So we have normal on the left and abnormal is on the right. If we look right here, we can see this kind of pooching up of that optic disc. It should not be pooched up normally. It should be flat with that retina. Just so that we can clarify here, this is normal. And then if you have a little pooching out of that optic disc, that is what papilledema looks like. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. Here's an example. We have a pretty swollen posterior aspect of that eye. It's pretty thick actually. We maybe even have a little bit of fluid in that Tenon's capsule right there. And what we wanna look for is this right here, this distance off of the retina. If it's greater than 0.6 to one millimeter, when you measure this, this is more likely to be papal edema. Now, when we're actually taking the measurement, sometimes we have to kind of extrapolate because you might have a little bit of swelling just on the periphery of the apex of that optic disc. And here's the measurement here. I measured from here to here, and we have 0 0.08 centimeters as our measurement. Now, what about papilledema versus pseudo papilledema. And this is important because one of the big things that we think about with papilledema is, is there increased intracranial pressure, which typically we think about with an enlarged optic nerve sheath diameter, but there is what's called pseudo papilledema, which is a situation where you're going to have what looks like papilledema without the enlargement of that optic nerve sheath diameter. So true papilledema, you're going to see it with increased intracranial pressure and any disease that can cause that, you are going to see optic nerve sheath diameter widening greater than around five millimeters, depending on if you want to be more sensitive or more specific. Obviously a higher number is going to be more specific. And then with pseudo papilledema that happens with optic nerve drusen, it can be a congenital problem. There can be masses. You can have systemic diseases that can cause issues just with the optic disc itself. And in those patients with pseudopapilledema, they are just gonna have a raised optic disc. We use the same cutoffs, but without the optic nerve sheath diameter widening that we typically see with true papilledema. That's it for this quick video on papilledema and the sonographic diagnosis. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.